Hey guys, it's Angie, also known as The Light. Welcome to my channel. Hope everybody is doing well. I know I have been missing um, for about maybe a little over two weeks now. But um, I ended up going to Atlanta for like a week. And then now they have me in quarantine for like 10 days. My 10 days, I think... Is either up today or tomorrow. Hi, Z Ford. How are you? Um, so please like, subscribe, um, share this video when you can, you know, after I'm done. Damn, I forgot my laptop on the other side of the room. Um, but you know what? Actually, let me see if I can comment below um yeah so if you want to um great i'm glad you're doing good for uh z4 i'm okay i'm okay a lot going on a lot going on with some crazy people but i'm good i don't i thought it was mercury retrograde but it seems like the universe and god is trying to clear more people out of my life you know some who are narcissists and some people who aren't narcissists but yeah so the um the topic today is believe the energy, okay? And yes, I am a spiritual woman, so I believe, you know, everything is based on energy and spirit, right? And a lot of times, you know, a lot of channels or psychologists or whoever, when they talk about narcissism, they don't really talk about the energy behind it and learning to discern or learning to be intuitive and in tune with your spirit can really help you out to stay away from a lot of negative people. Oh, I feel like I'm about to sneeze. Um, but yeah, so if you want to book a conversation with me, you can do so. I, I still do, um, conversation sessions, phone sessions. Um, so what you do is you make your payment first and I'll put that in the description and in the in the description bar and in the comment section after um, I finish this live. Um, you can donate to my super chat if you want to. And if you want to send a love donation, I do have a uh, cash app, um, which is dollar sign the light seven seven seven. I have PayPal, Zelle. And that is neoangie3000 at yahoo.com. I can't type it right now because I forgot my laptop on the other side of the room. And I don't want to get up. Um, but I'll put that information in the comment section and in the description bar as well. So what you do is you make your payment. It's $15 for 30 minutes, $30 for one hour. And um, I can help you on your healing journey from narcissists narcissistic abuse or if you're having an issue with a particular zodiac sign i can help you with that as well all right so let's get into the topic excuse me didn't want to you know wipe my nose on camera all right so i hope everyone is doing well sorry i've been mia um because I was away, I was in Atlanta. I had a good time in Atlanta, guys. I don't know how many of you are from Atlanta, Georgia. I had a good time in Atlanta. But you know how I know I talk about all these trips that I take. <laughs> it's always some bull beep. I'm trying not to curse anymore so I can get, you know, get some money, you know, so they can monetize me on certain videos. So I'm gonna try not to curse, okay? So spank me if I curse, guys. Anyway, so I was in Atlanta. I enjoy Atlanta, but I spent a lot of money in Atlanta. Okay, so I need to make that money back. So book me, guys. <laughs> book me for conversations. Donate to a sister today. Okay, because I, I, I really need the funds. All right. So um, I was in Atlanta for a week and I had a good time. But while I was in Atlanta, I met up with a few people so you know I always got a story for you guys so some of you um, know that I used to be Christian so I used to be Christian and um, I was seven-day Adventist Christian so growing up 
Hey Slim. So growing up in a Christian um, environment, I would go to different churches. So, you know, I knew a lot of people, okay? I, I call myself the popular loner because I like to be by myself, but I know a shitload of people. I cursed already. Look at that. I know a lot of people, okay? Because <laughs> I used to be in the choir. I used to do this thing what they call Pathfinders, which is kind of like a military Girl Scout, Boy Scout type of thing. I was an usher. I was on the acting, you know, society. I did a lot of different things when I was in religion, okay? In Seven Day Events is Faith. So, um, I know a lot of people. So, a lot of people that I grew up with, they live in Atlanta. And a couple of times I've gone to Atlanta, I wouldn't usually hit these people up because I'm very funny about connecting with people from my past. But I was like, you know what? Let me hit up a couple of people that my spirit led me to contact. I was like, you know what? I'm going there by myself. I'm going to want to like, you know, eat, drink, hang out with some people, even though it's still a quote unquote pandemic out there I was like you know what let me um hit up a few people and I did and uh I hit up about four people okay so um one of the individuals that I um met up with hung out with was a a male friend of mine and we grew up together in church and that went that went well um and he always had like a crush on me when we were kids. So that went well. That was cool. And then another friend I ended up hanging out with, um, she just, you know, she survived cancer. She she just went through a divorce, you know. So it was a very emotional trip for me because I got to talk to people who knew me since I was like five, six years old. You know, sometimes you don't realize you need to kind of revisit your childhood. You need to kind of see how much you've grown, what people thought of you growing up. Like, I really was, it's weird because, like, we all three were around the same age. One of them is 38. I'm 37. The girl is 36. So all of us grew up together, and we were kind of talking, and we were, like, reliving, like, what we thought about each other when we were kids. And we're like, what? I didn't even think you liked me. Like, really? You, you really thought I was fly like that? You know, so it's so funny how we grow up, and we think that nobody admires us. No one's watching us. No one likes us. So it was really interesting that my inner child got fed on this trip and I didn't know I really needed that you know so sometimes God the universe will send you things send you signs send you a form of healing or a reminder to show you how much you've grown and what people think of you um so that was that was a joy and then I hung out with another friend I actually used to date her brother when I was a virgin <laughs> so when I was like 17 18 I used to date this guy and I hung out with his younger sister but she's 33 now so she's not you know she's not a, a baby anymore she's a grown woman even though I used to look at her like she was so much younger than me but yeah so that I had a good time revisiting my childhood but then the <laughs> the fourth um individual that I connected with um is where this video is coming about okay and you know I was got a, a story for you so this fourth individual I feel I've spoken about her on my channel before but only in a positive note and if I have said anything it probably has to do with her marriage and you know what a lot of times I don't speak freely about people on my channel until I know in my heart I'm officially done with them. You know what I'm saying? So it's I, I don't want y'all to ever think that I talk about individuals on my channel that are like, I'm still cool with. No. Once I feel like I'm spiritually done, physically done with those individuals, I have absolutely no problem telling you that story because if I feel like I want to work something out with somebody... I'm not going to be on my channel talking crap about them, okay? So I just want to put that out there because I don't want people to think like, oh, she talks about her friends or, you know, on her channel, and then she goes and she hangs out with those people. No. When I discuss these things, I'm in a transition of do I want to work that relationship or friendship out or I'm completely done, okay? And they, then they become material, all right? So 
I've talked about this woman before. She's older than me. She's about 45. I'm 37. And she actually used to babysit me when she was um, about maybe 16 or 17, basically. So um, we always had this good relationship. And what, what, what I thought, keep in mind, guys, who you are um, when you're not healed is a completely different person from when you do go on your healing journey, okay? So, who I was in my 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 adolescence, you know, in my teens, in my 20s, is completely different from the woman I am in my 30s, damn near almost, I'm almost 40, okay? So, um, you don't see certain behaviors of these narcissists or of these toxic individuals and i'm not calling her narcissist but i'm gonna say that when you it's crazy how i look at it i'm like wow you know she's kind of toxic this is this is toxic okay or this is um this is negative behavior okay and it is shocking because i always looked to her hi how you doing oh i haven't seen you on here in a while so, um, yeah, so I always looked up to this girl, especially I always look uh, this girl, this woman, I always looked up to this woman as like a big sister, as a mentor, you know, as a role model, because she is a psychologist. Okay, this is the irony of the story. She is a psychologist, and I'm very sure I've mentioned her before on my channel. So, um, so for many, many years, she was good to me or what I thought. Remember we talked about how, you know, narcs or, you know, negative people. Um, I know it's, I know because I never tell y'all when I'm going to come on live. I'm so sorry, but I'm glad. Hi, Lily. I'm so glad that um, y'all caught me or you caught me. Okay. So um, this particular woman, sorry, something's in my eyeball. <laughs> This particular woman, you know, I always looked up to her like a big sister, a role model. And um, so even after my mom had passed, my mom passed away when I was 23. She even got closer to me and took on this role like a family member, right? But when I think back to it, um, the friendship was more of like a financial thing. You know, some people... Um, I think some people feel like they are good friends because they buy you things or, you know, they take you places. And I'm not saying that that's not a good way to show love because maybe that's her love language, okay? So I'm never going to, like, really talk bad about this individual in that sense. Hey, Thursday. Um, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, so I never really want to talk so bad about this individual but looking back i'm like oh this person i don't really think they really invested in me emotionally okay and a lot of us get caught up in that hey precious a lot of a lot of people get caught up in that with thinking oh this person spends money on me they must love me you know and you need a lot more you need respect <laughs> you need guidance you need um Things to build that friendship with that relationship up. You need um what else do you need in relationships and friendships? You need you need a lot of different things outside of just a person buying you things and taking you places, basically. So anyway, um I remember so about five years ago, she excuse me, she met a guy on Tinder and but you say you need more than exactly you need more than gifts and relationships. And I I normally I don't know why, but I kind of attract people who think because they do financially, then automatically makes them a good lover or friend. Hey, Char. And I'm just like, no, that's not it. And I'm then you're sitting there lacking the emotional stability that you need in a relationship or friendship. You're not having an emotional connection with that individual, and you would think her as a as a um, 
psychologist, you would think that she would be there for me a little bit more emotionally, but no. And I kind of just always thought, well, maybe she's not there really emotionally or doesn't ask me how I'm doing a lot of times. It's because she's maybe she's exhausted, you know, high life, you know, um, maybe she's exhausted because she has clientele and doesn't want to be like a therapist to other people. So I never overstepped that boundary and went to her to talk about things I was going through because I didn't want her to feel like, oh, I'm trying to get consultation from her for free. But she, well, basically she heals people for a living, right? Okay. Exactly. That is a way for people to buy the abuse, right? And even through the years, she will always say to me, oh my gosh, you're such an inspiration. You've gone through this, you've gone through hell and you still like, just come out on top like I really look up to you blah 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 blah. so I'll be like eh, okay whatever now I get it you know I understand that sometimes I couldn't inspire people because of things I've been through and I overcame things but I was just like okay whatever you know but anyway so about five years ago she ended up getting married um and that's when things got a little weird okay hey Ella what I need advice at the moment. Lost my job and, and moved with the narc. Well, I got to talk about this situation. But what you can do is you can set up a phone conversation with me. Or you can write your comment in this um, in this um, live afterwards. And people can help you that way. Okay? But I have to focus on the live first. Okay? So sorry for your loss, so sorry for what you're going through, but I have to get through this, okay? Um, anyway, so she she um got married, but that's when things got a little weird. And I understand that um people change when they get married, okay? I get it. I understand. But things got weird when I think I told this story before, but I'm gonna refresh it. I'm gonna refresh it. So basically what happened was you remember how I was I'm saying to you how our friendship was based basically like her helping me out financially, her doing nice things to me, th things for me. So but basically when she would come into town because she doesn't live in New York and I live in New York. So she'll say, oh, it's your birthday. Let's go to the spa. Let's go shopping. Let's go out to eat. I got it. Don't worry. Keep in mind. I didn't ask her for these things. A lot of the things that she did for me, it was just like her giving it to me. Okay, in my 20s, I ain't gonna lie, guys, I was super broke. I have more money now. I'm more stable now in my 30s than I've ever been. In my 20s, my life was surrounded by narcs. So I didn't have the ability to make money and focus on my goals. Um, and I was living with a narcissist, okay? <laughs> Thank you so much, Ella. I was like living with a narcissist and you know how some of y'all are able to make it when y'all living with a narcissist. But me, no. Being around narcissists, it really like, it really shut me down. I was always in a depressive state. I could never manifest money. I could never manifest greatness. But now that a lot of these narcissists are dead, they're not in my life anymore, that I was able to um, put my best foot forward and hustle. You get it, guys? You know what I'm saying? So anyway, my 20s was filled with a lot of like just hardship and being broke, you know, eating ramen noodles, guys. I went through a lot, you know, and um, I'm just thankful that I'm not living that way anymore, you know. So th during those, during my 20s, you know, she was, when you, when you don't have anything and you are around somebody who, you know, they're financially stable and they're giving you things and they're helping you out financially once in a blue moon. You're going to take it. You're going to take it, you know. But I'm not, I'm not going to front. There was times where she would give me things and I would not feel right about it, you know. And it's interesting. That's what I'm saying. Believe your energy. Believe your energy, okay. Some people would, would, what? would try to sell you fire when you're facing hell. Exactly, exactly. So... Um, my energy always was like, oh, don't take this. Don't take this. Because you understand that. I'm not saying that she didn't give to me from a good heart. But there are people that will give you things in order to abuse you. Or give you things in order to control you. Okay. So, 
she would say things like, oh, I think you should apply for this. I think you should do this. I think you should do that, you know, and um, I get it because she went a certain direction and I'm going a certain direction myself. <laughs> so I'm never going to sit there and say, <laughs> I never wanted the conventional life where you you know, I never wanted that house with the white picket fence, the husband, the dogs, and the cat, and the kids. I never wanted that, okay? Would you say test the spirit now that we know how these creatures operate exactly? So I never wanted the dream that she had. You get it? I always wanted to be the rebel. I wanted to go a different route, you know? But she was trying to steer me in her direction. And we can't do that. If somebody wants to flip burgers for... For the rest of their life. If somebody wants to move to an island island and be a fisherman. We have to learn to respect people's wishes. Okay. So I never wanted what she has. You get it? I'm more of a free spirit person. I am a healer. I'm an artist. And I choose to make my money in unconventional ways. So you know how it is. When you're living in the matrix. You're living in the world. When you're not going the route that everyone else is going. People fear you. Because you figured out how to break the matrix. You figured out how to be different. And Exactly. And narcs do not like that. They don't like that. They're like, wait a minute. What? You went through all of this and you still... No, Narcs are not free spirit at all. You still, you still, you still succeeding. You know they don't like when you have your own swag, you have your own, uh, you know, way about you. You're figuring it out. They went this road, you went this road, and and I think it it really agitates them when they no longer can control you. So I've changed, you know, her and I were in the same religion. I'm not Christian anymore. My beliefs are different. Just like when the whole voting thing had came up, she was like, oh, who are you voting for? I said, I'm not voting for anyone. I decided not to vote because I feel like both the candidates are the same. And she was just like, what? That's weird. What are you talking about? You know, so you understand when you, when you heal from these horrible experiences with these narcs or toxic individuals you gotta be willing to be nailed to the cross you know you already went through so much but you have to be willing to completely lose all your friends all your lovers your way of thinking your lifestyle because you are about to be alone sometimes okay you're about to be alone sometimes even in your thinking you know, your life is about to change completely because once you once the mask comes off and you see these people for who they are, that's it. You know, and like I said, these people are very intuitive. Narcissists are very intuitive. Toxic people are very intuitive. And it has been a struggle. I'm not going to say it. it has been a struggle in this friendship because she didn't accept my transition as well. Okay, I'm not the same person. I may look the same, I may dress the same, but I'm not the same person. My beliefs completely changed. I had to build up a whole new structure. Okay, and um, so we struggled. We have been struggling in the friendship, and I'm not quite sure why she's held on. Um, but I think she definitely does have an issue with me. I don't know why she has this issue with me. Um, some people don't, some people are not going to like the new you, okay? And they're not going to like the new you because you no longer can be controlled, okay? They no longer can control you. They no longer um, can manipulate you. They'll no longer be able to convince you to do things that you're not comfortable with. You get it? They no longer um, are going to be able to get that energy from you, get that supply from you anymore, okay? You're your own person. You're going to be saying no a lot. They're not going to like that, okay? How you normally react to things, you're not going to act, you're not going to react anymore, okay? You know, I recently had a, a narc king, oh, I miss you, I love you. What? I didn't say it back. And I, I, I probably shocked them. I don't do that anymore. If someone says, I miss you, and I don't miss you, I don't say it back anymore. If someone says, I love you, and I just don't feel like saying I love you at the moment, 
I'm just not going to say it, okay? I want you to practice that. Be honest with yourself. Keep it real, okay, guys? Keep it real. I'm honest. I, I'm going to always be true to myself now. Before, we were people-pleasing. When you are surrounded by toxic individuals, you're surrounded by narcissists, you definitely um, are a people-pleaser, okay? So, anyway, I'm in Atlanta, guys. I just had to tell you that backstory. <laughs> Oh, God, exactly. I fake I love you. Fake, don't, don't do it no more. Don't do it. I don't even care. Trust me, guys. I know I come off as a B-I-T-C-H. I get it. But I don't do that no more. I miss you. Okay, you should miss me. And they're looking at me like, what? Because you have to understand, these people are used to the weak you. They're used to the old you that they got over on. That means they manipulate it. So when when they see the new you and they see they knocks and negative people, they're constantly testing you. They're constantly testing you. OK, so now when they test me, they're like, hold on. She didn't she didn't react to this. So let me go react to this. Let me let me throw something else at her to react to. Damn, she didn't react to that. Hmm. Let me throw another test at her. She didn't react to that. This is what's going on. So right now, I have a couple of people from my past, you know, a couple of people in my life, and they're trying to get my energy, but they can't. They're like, oh, can we meet up? No, I'm busy. Okay, well, can I make a hair appointment? I'm not taking any new clients right now. Okay, well, can you call me? Sorry, I'm busy. I can't call you. So this is what I'm doing now. Protect your energy. Believe the energy, okay? Okay. So I saw this quote that said, um, remember when you felt those butterflies in the beginning, when you first met those people with toxic relationships or friendship, that was your body letting you know and warning you to leave that person alone. <laughs> so when I think back to it, those men that I felt those butterflies about, or those friends that I felt those butterflies about, or those family you know, members that I felt butterflies around. <laughs> Those are the relationships that ended toxically, okay? And it's true. You get around them and you're nervous. Why would I be nervous around you? Who are you? You know, but back then, you grow up and we watch movies and we're told that, oh, you know, when you get those little butterflies, you feel like, hey, Lottie, when you, you get those little butterflies in your stomach, that means you love them. No, it's not. Love, I would say, is a comfortable feeling. You feel like, and I'm not saying that you can't be like a little nervous because I get when we meet somebody and they so fine. You know, we like, ooh, oh my God, he's so cute. I get it, I get it, I do that too. I be like, oh my goodness, I gotta be on my best behavior. But if I spiritually don't feel comfortable around somebody, if I even sleep next to somebody and I don't feel comfortable, I'm like, something's not right. So I want y'all to get in tune of using your energy, using your spirit and listening. Okay, those headaches you're feeling, the stomach aches, the butterflies, those are all signs to let you know, don't F with this person, something's coming, okay? When God created us, I know some of you don't believe in God, but I feel when God created us, we have a whole like nervous system, you know that, right? We have these nervous systems, and some of us are even empaths, and I am an empath, and I also have other clairvoyant gifts, when I was a kid, I didn't know about them gifts. I didn't know what I was feeling. But I did know whenever my dad would drop me off to my narcissistic grandma, I would cry. And my mom would be like, why are you crying every time you go to your grandmother? So y'all who have children also, pay attention to how your children react around people. Okay, it took my mother a long time to go, you know what, I'm not, I don't want my daughter going over to her grandmother's because why is she coming home with nosebleeds? I would, I would come home with nosebleeds from staying at my grandmother's house. Hey, 1111, I would come home with nosebleeds, stomach aches, diarrhea, all kind of stuff. This is how powerful negative energy can be. 
okay? And I talked about this. I have another video on here that talks about how narcissists can literally make you sick, okay? And I told about, I talked about how, you know, I believe my mother got cancer, breast cancer, because she was with a narcissist for 12 years, okay? So all that pent-up emotion, all that pent-up sorrow and trauma, it can manifest in illnesses, okay? Even I have suffered from cysts on my ovaries, and I believe that came from being intimate with multiple narcissistic men. So don't play with this energy. Get in tune. And as you heal, you're going to even become more sensitive to the negative energy of narcissists and negative people. Okay? So for me, 10 years ago, I wasn't as sensitive to narcissism and negativity as I am today. Now it's like doo -doo 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 -doo, I'll get a headache. I'll start breathing funny, all kind of stuff. Okay. Now I can't play with that. Let me go into the comments. I'm sorry. I just been talking up a storm because I've been missing for so long. And I have so much to say. Um this is very true. I I hadn't thought or of it like that before. Thanks, sweetheart. You're welcome, Lottie. Let me go back up here. Um. Okay. Life nine. Nine. If they can't control you, they will try some tricks to take to take what take you take what believe it again. I think that's what you're trying to say. Then the whole destructive cycle again. Oh yeah. Okay. Basically, so they'll, they'll test you. And when that doesn't work, the cycle begins again. Very, very true. They're demonic, period. They are demonic. They are demonic, and they've been practicing these methods for a very long time, and they do have dark spirits that are controlling them. So don't play with this energy. The guys who's in the chat, can y'all click like for me? Because it gets me on the algorithm when you click like so if you're in the chat please click like for me even if you just come in and you leave and you want to watch this video later just click like for me guys i really appreciate you if anybody wants to donate to me they can my cash app is dollar sign the light 777 if you want to book a convo you can do so i'm going to put that information in the comment section when I click off the live. But if anybody wants to talk to me, um, you can make a payment through Cash App or PayPal or Zelle. My PayPal and Zelle is neoangie3000 at yahoo.com. It's $15 for 30 minutes, $30 for one hour. Now, going back to the story. Um, so yes, now that I'm healed, I noticed that I'm even more sensitive. I'm even more clairvoyant. I pick up more energy faster. So this is why I don't like to go. We're not really going into too many crowded places now because of the whole big C that's out there in the world. But, um, you know, I wouldn't want to go into a club or a concert or somewhere where there's a lot of people because I literally can feel all the energy of people. So being a lot of you are empaths and you you don't even know what it is. I think because people don't realize to, okay so an empath to me is literally a person who is an emotional psychic. Okay. There is even times where I can actually hear people's thoughts. I can't read minds but it's almost like I can hear their thoughts or if they're thinking something, I will know exactly what they're thinking. So I may not know exactly in the details of what they're thinking, but say somebody's thinking, oh, I'm hungry or they're thinking about food. I will turn them like, oh, do you want to go get something to eat? And they're like, how did you know that? <laughs> or I normally will, and I'm, I'm telling y'all this because I want some of you to think you're not tripping, you're not bugging. This is literally a gift from God, and I think this gift gets in tuned more because we've been around narcissists. Because narcissists are always plotting. Negative people are always plotting, and they're not plotting verbally. They're thinking this stuff. They're thinking, and they're plotting in their head. How can I get X, Y, Z from this individual? Okay, so we become these pro empaths okay there's actually a show called fate i think it's just called fate and i believe it's on netflix 
If it's not on Netflix, it's on Prime. And there is actually an empath on the show. So there's a show about these people who have different superpowers. And one of the superpowers, there's an empath on there. So they use her to um, basically, they have an enemy. She can read their energy. She can read um, what they're thinking next. Okay, so I'm telling you guys, anyone who's an empath or have any type of clairvoyancy, you're the bomb, okay? It's a gift. Embrace it. Sharpen it. Use it. I'm telling you, all right? So I, I'm thankful for it. But I do think it, it, the ability of being an empath, it increased. So it's not just about feeling, you know, um, feeling for others and caring. No, you literally take on other people's energy. You're happy but then you go and you sit in a room with somebody who who who's going through pain, who's going through something. They could be sick. So there's all different levels to being an empath. There's some people who are empaths and they connect to um, nature. There's some people who can probably pick up on death and sickness. There's some people who can actually literally read minds. You know, so there's all different. Start studying about being an empath, okay? But anyway... Ever since I healed, I feel like that ability has increased. And it helped me out because I'm like, hmm, I know this person feels some kind of way about me, but they still around me. I ain't going to mess with them no more, okay? So I've dealt with that before. So um, my trip in Atlanta was, you know, dwindling down. And I contacted the friend who, you know, is a psychologist. And um. <laughs> The, the, the crazy thing was this. So I was supposed to stay a few days in a hotel. Um, yeah, I was supposed to stay a few days in a hotel. And then the last two days of my trip, I was supposed to be staying at her house. And we've already covered this. Keep in mind, guys, I didn't ask because she's married now. And I feel very funny. I don't know if you guys do this. I feel very funny sleeping in people's house. When they got a man or they got a husband living with them. And it's because I think because I've had bad experiences of like people, husband, boyfriend, baby daddy flirting with me or just being inappropriate. You know, I've seen certain things that made me uncomfortable. So if I can afford a hotel, I'm going to stay in a hotel. Okay. And I advise y'all to do that too. And it's not just men who come at women. There's some, there's some people wise who will come at you guys too. Okay. So... I didn't feel comfortable, but she said, you know what? We haven't seen each other in a long time. I have not seen her in about maybe two, two and a half years. So um, I said, well, you know what? I'm going to stay downtown Atlanta, you know, for a few days. And then my last two days when I'm in Atlanta, I'm going to stay at your house. And so she said, okay, this I've stayed at her house before. Normally, if I was in Atlanta, she would pick me up from wherever I was, bring me back to her house, we'll hang out. Like, I've been there before, you know what I'm saying? And um, and then when it would be time for me to go back to the airport, her or her husband would drop me off, you know, to the airport. No, her husband has never been inappropriate. I could tell he really, really likes me as a person. Like, whenever I'm around, he's always like, oh, you know, you're so cool and this, this, and that. And he'll compliment me on my style. But he's never gave me like a weird vibe like he's trying to like get with me or something behind her back. But I could tell he does like my energy. So I'm, I'm not going to be talking bad about this woman's husband just in case they come across this video one day. <laughs> he's a cool person. Have no problem. But I feel like a lot of people when they get married they lose themselves in their marriage. And definitely I feel she lost herself in this marriage. And I would say you know she got married I guess just late. She got married at 40, okay? So when you get married um, late in the game and she had not been with anybody, um, I don't want to put her business out there like that, but she had not had many intimate partners. So I think she latched on to this individual and, you know, made a real tight soul tie with, her, with him very rapidly. And so what happened was, keep in mind, I told you guys how our relationship was. Sometimes I would, you know, borrow money from her. Or, you know, when we would go out, she would always pay, things like that. But keep in mind, 
even though I was broke in my 20s, if I ever could, whenever I did get money, I would send her a birthday card. I would buy her little gifts. I would give her certain things. Like, she has things in her closet right now that I purchased for her, you know. And anyway, so um, I feel like she lost herself in this relationship and, you know, in this marriage. So I remember when they weren't married yet. They had been dating maybe for about two or three years and um because they only been married for i think about three years out of the five years they've been together so at this time they're probably married for about no they've probably been together for about two years right so i um yeah so she hits me up and she's like oh i got engaged and i'm like oh my god i'm so happy for you da -da 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 -da. you know i was really really happy for her and you know i'm I mean, I'm an emotional person, but I think because of how I grew up with the narcissist, I don't like express it like that. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm feminine, but I'm not like feminine in a tone when it comes to my emotions. You get it, guys? Like I cater when I date. I cook. I clean. I'll, I'll, you know, rub his head and be all gentle and tender. But when it comes to like, I'm not a type of girl who just be like, be crying and, oh, baby, I'm not a goo goo, gushy, mushy type of girl. OK, maybe because I'm a Leo and Leo is a masculine sign. I'm just not a mushy, gushy girl. I don't know if you can kind of understand that, guys. Are y'all mushy? Has narcissism made y'all mushy? Because it definitely has made me like stone when it comes to expressing my emotions. OK. Anyway, there was a time where I didn't even cry, guys. I cry so much now, like behind closed doors, before I can go a whole year without even crying. Like, I remember about two months ago, I cried. No, in December, yes. I cried every single day in, like, December. And I was like, why am I crying? And it's because I never cry. And sometimes your body is like, okay, we have things to release, all right? But anyway... So she'll be like, I'm so in love. She'll text me like every day and FaceTime me. I'm so in love. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm so happy for you. After like maybe, you know, two or three weeks of like someone texting you, I'm so in love. What do you say to that? So I'll be like, oh, you know, I'm happy for you, sis. So I don't know if she took that as me being jealous, but it was just like, I don't know what to say. Like, I'm happy for you. I'm not a mushy, gushy type of person, you know? And then some people will say, no, that was just her way of trying to throw in your face because you're single and she's not, you know? So you got to be careful with narcs and toxic people because they'll do that too. But um, I was, oh, I've always been very, very happy for her because in my head, I always felt if there's anybody who deserved love, it was her. She was a person that played the game. You know, you know, she she wasn't a person who slept around. She went to college. She did the right thing. She didn't have children out of wedlock. You know, I always felt that she deserved love. OK, not that anyone who did didn't do those things don't deserve love. But I felt like, you know, people who play by the rules so much, then, yeah, they really, really do deserve that love. So I was really happy for her, but I noticed after that, she kind of like drifted. I mean, how much can I say I'm so happy for you? To the point I'd be like, oh, that's so sweet. You know, I didn't know what to text back. I didn't know what to say. And um, so I think she thinks like I'm jealous of her, which is crap. I'm never jealous of any relationship. And that's because I grew up in such a toxic home that I feel like you never really know what goes on in people's marriages. So why would I be jealous of your friend, your your relationship or your marriage? Anyway, so 2018, I go visit her because um, her and the husband, they buy a house together. At this moment, I don't even know. I didn't even know that they they were married. You know, when I found out they were married, when I saw him... When they came to get me and he had a wedding band on and he kept saying my wife, my wife to his family, his family members were at the house too. And I was like, wait a minute. So she talked about the relationship. She showed me when she got engaged. She, she FaceTimed me, showed me her ring. She told about him for months, but she doesn't tell me when she actually married him. I had no idea this chick got married. 
So I'm like, so they had like a, sm a small ceremony. And I thought that was just so strange, but I didn't say anything to her. That whole uh, couple of days I was at her house, I didn't mention it. Like, you know, how come you didn't tell me you got married? I didn't even know you were married. Because in my head, I was just like, well, maybe it's none of my business. I left it. I let it be. That's when it was like, something's up. Okay. So one day, this is when I was starting my customer service job. I, um, I'm back in New York and I say to her, I text her, I'm like, Hey girl, oh my gosh, like I'm about to start this job. I didn't think I was going to get it and I need transportation to get to work. So, um, I'm not going to have like a hair client until that Friday. So can I borrow $25 from you and I'll give it back to you because in New York we have like the Metro cards that you can get on the train and the bus. And I think the, the unlimited Metro was like 40 bucks or something like that. So I so, said, well, it's best for me to get an unlimited Metro. Can I borrow $25 and I'm going to put whatever I have, you know, to purchase the Metro. So she said to me, well, no, I can't loan you $25 unless I ask my man. So I was just like, huh? In my head, I'm like, she's like, oh, yeah, my money is his money now. So if he says yes, then I can loan you the $25. So I was like, no, it's okay. Don't worry about it. Like, I'll just ask the bus man to get me to let me on the bus. Cause I'm not about to be going through this with her. I was just like, what the hell is going on with her? I thought it was completely weird. But anyway, so she still sends the $25. And a couple of days go by that Friday. I end up getting a hair client. I had, you know, the money. So I text her and go, hey, I'm about to you know, PayPal you back the $25. She goes, no, don't, um, you know, don't send me the $25 back. I told my man, um, the discussion we had and he told me that was very insulting. So we're going to send you $250 and that's a parting gift. So now that I'm married, I will no longer be giving you any gifts or anything, um, financially because my money is his money now. And, um, yes, I'm cutting you off financially. Keep in mind, I'm like, cutting me off financially? Like, wh what? I'm like, okay. I said, completely. She said, well, never ask me for anything again in life. So I was like, oh, sure. No problem. I said, I don't feel comfortable taking this $250, especially since he advised you to give me $250. Like, it wasn't your idea. She's like, no, it's okay, just keep it. So I ended up keeping the, the money or whatever the case is. And it's been like maybe two and a half years. And I haven't asked her for anything, guys. Nothing at all. <laughs> Nothing at all. So it was weird because a few months after the $250, she said, hey, I know that you want to be a life coach. And you said the course is two grand. I said, yeah, the course I want to take is two grand because I wanted to go to like a school, not just do it online. So she said, well, I'm willing to loan you two grand. I said, oh, no, 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 mm, eh, eh, eh. nope, not going to happen. No, thank you. I said, I don't care if it takes me till I'm 40. I will pay for the life coaching course by myself. I kind of think, guys, that was a test. I really feel... That was a test of whatever the case is. Let me see if y'all been saying anything. Hey, Sebastian. I definitely agree, especially us in the U.S. There's narcissists in every place walking around like, oh, yes, definitely. Um, You get sick. Yeah, okay. What you did to your hair? What you do to your hair? These are called faux locks so they're like faux dreadlocks what happened you don't like them i love it <laughs> um <laughs> yes when i went sorry if y'all hear something i'm getting like messages hey neffy yes when i went to a concert when i was really young i was shaking all over the place yes that energy is disgusting when you're around only different people what you put on your skin there's nothing on my skin. I have um, some concealer under my eyes. And then I fill my eyebrows in with eyebrow makeup. And that's it. You don't see. I got I got pimples. There's pimples there. I've been eating chocolate lately. Uh, yeah. No, I, I, just have, I just have good skin. I take care of myself. That's all. <laughs> um, 
just drink water, eat your sea moss gel. And, um, but yeah, I never really had horrible skin, but I, I get little bumps and stuff and I have freckles here too, you know. Okay, let's see. Um, Diva, she was doing too much trying to rub it in your face. Exactly. Thank you, Diva. Thank you, Diva Divine. A Divine. Exactly. She was, and I think because it wasn't like really, it was really annoying me. It was really wasn't getting to me. Maybe that's why. And she probably was like, I can't. I get you, Angie. Like the very traditional girly girl reaction. Yeah, I don't have that. That's not me. I'm not like, oh my god. I'm not like that. I'm not a girly. I have a friend who is constantly fake crying <laughs> to me about something, but um, is not to be found when exactly. I can't stand those people. They want to emotionally dump on you, but when it's time for you to dump on them, they're like, I'm out of here. I had a friend do that too, trying to rub it in my face. Mm-hmm. Hey, Nicole. You sent a donation on Cash App? Thank you, baby. I love it. Thank you. I appreciate you. If you want to, um, what you call it, um, book something. I don't know how much you sent, but if you want to book something, just email me at neoangie3000 at yahoo.com. How do you call someone out on their crocodile tears? Nothing. You know what? I just stay, I just look at them. Like a weird stare. I'd be like, like, are you done? You know, since I, I think I'm more bold now than I've ever been in my life. Like, I, I, I'm just more bold. I take Seamoss and it cleared up my skin. Yes, mahogany. See, and, and um, how I say your name? Fa, I don't want to, I don't want to mess your name up, but how you doing, brother? Um, so, Seamoss is the bomb, and it gives me so much energy. Like, I, I actually bought Seamoss gel, um, from someone called Coco Chanel. You can find her on Instagram, Coco Chanel, and it's so good. It was peach flavor. Um, some of you don't know what Seamoss is. But it's, it looks like seaweed, and they actually get it from the bottom of the sea, like in Jamaica or Trinidad or an island. And then you can basically blend it up. You wash it with, like, lime and water, and you can blend it up, and you can make it into a gel. But, yes, Google sea moss, okay? And you can put it in your smoothies. I just straight up take it. I do it like a... Um, two tablespoons a day okay but yes back to the story where um you know that's when she started to show but but me that's when she started to show you know like it was like oh it's all about this man and i i respected it that's your husband you're now legally binded to him they own a house together i get that i'm not one of those hating ass single friends i don't care about your relationship do you but at the same time, you're not about to treat me like crap because I'm the single one. No, 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 no. That's not that's not gonna go on. You know, so since then I was feeling some kind of way. And it wasn't what she did, it was how she did it, guys. It was how she did it. So I remember the this is the last time I saw her. Um I remember we went out to get some Thai food. You know, Thai food is so cheap. You buy like five different entrees and the bill's like 50 bucks, you know? <laughs> so we went out to eat together and um, the bill came. So I remember I paid, I paid for the bill and she was like, oh, wow, I didn't even know you had a bank account. And I was looking at her like, what? She was throwing so much shade at me. And I'm just like, to me, that's disgusting. How can you offer your help? How could you do things for people and you going to turn around and rub it in people's face? Like they asked for it. How, 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 do you, how do you do, how do you be kind and at the same time turn around and be like, yeah, I did that for them, da 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 da, -da. Oh, matter of fact, this person is a Taurus. And I do want to say this. I've had issues with Tauruses. I still love you guys. I still love Tauruses. Don't think I'm coming for you. But please, I know a lot of Tauruses that do that. Don't do things for people or help people and then go and tell people. 
Don't do that. Keep it to yourself so that way the universe can keep giving you back what you put out there. You know, I've had, I, I've had other Tauruses do that. Yeah, I, I I did this and I did that for him. and did it, did it. Why, why you got to tell everybody what you did for somebody? Just do it and let it be. Or don't do it at all. Okay? So, yeah. Um, that's when the tension in the, in the friendship became like that because I was just like, is this woman serious? And it hurt. I ain't gonna front. It hurt because I looked up, I looked up to her as a role model. I looked up to her like a big sister. And I was like, yo, she really out here trying to make it seem like I was using her all these years when that was never who I was. You know what I'm saying? Um, but anyway, so Let's screen. Let's let's go. Let's go. Let me let me let me fast forward the story because I'm I'm talking almost an hour and I gotta go eat lunch. So, um, yeah. So about two weeks ago, you know, I'm in Atlanta and I'm like, I had to tell y'all that whole story so y'all can understand what the hell happened while I was in Atlanta. Okay. So I was supposed to be staying at her house for two days, the last two days of my trip. So, Sunday, I'm supposed to be going to her house Monday. So, Sunday, I'm out with uh, another friend. We're out having brunch. She doesn't call me, guys. She text messages me this long text that says, Hey, I'm not going to be able to pick you up tomorrow. So, if you want to stay at my house, you can take an Uber to my house. Guys, some of you who know y'all live in the South or y'all been to Atlanta... Everything is like a 30-minute ride from Atlanta, and she lives about an hour, probably like, she lives like maybe 45 minutes outside. She lives on the outskirts of Atlanta. She don't live downtown Atlanta. So everywhere I was going in Atlanta is about a 20 to 30-minute ride, right? Guys, I was spending $30 every time. I was spending like $60 a day on Ubers while I was there because I don't drive, right? I knew I know I need to get my license because I could have I could have got a rental for that, right? Sorry, I'm thirsty. <laughs> so I'm in my head like if it costs six if it costs thirty dollars to go ten miles, I think to her house the Uber would have been over a hundred dollars. And I'm like Thank God I had a little change in my bank account, guys, because I ended up having to book another hotel for the last two days because I said, why would I spend $100 to get to your house in an Uber after you already confirmed with me that you were going to pick me up on Monday? And then, guys, she said, and how are you going to get to the airport when it's time for you to get to, when it's time for you to fly out? I was like, are you kidding me? Guys, I don't even drive, and whenever someone comes to New York to visit me or whatever the case is, I don't even do that. I'm like, oh, we're going to take an Uber, or I'll get on a bus with them. We'll go together. And I was just like, huh? So I said to her, I said, you know what? I don't want to inconvenience. I said to her, I said, you know what? Let me call you. I said, let me call you. I said, um, because this is not a discussion through text. So I called her the first time she didn't pick up. Eventually, she 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 calls me back. I said, listen, I don't want to inconvenience myself. I don't want to inconvenience you. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm, I'm, I'm going to just go ahead and book a hotel. It cost me like $170 to book another hotel for two nights, which is actually a pretty good place, a, a pretty good price. And the airport was literally around the corner from the airport. And they had a free shuttle. I ended up still paying for Uber. But they had a free shuttle um, that can take me to the airport when I was ready to fly out back home. And sometimes you just got to pay for your peace. Okay? You got to pay for your peace. I could have pushed it and said, oh, it's okay. I'm going to pay $100 Uber to come to your house. Nope. Nope. Didn't do it. Glad I didn't do it. But then she said she wasn't coming downtown Atlanta. And she couldn't pick me up Monday. Guys, you're not going to believe this. Monday comes she goes, hey, we're going to come take you out to dinner. What? So she actually ended up coming 
downtown Atlanta, guys. And in my head, I'm like, well, if you didn't want me to stay at your house, if you have a, if you have a problem with me, why are you offer? You know, and this is the shit that people do. I'm sorry, I keep cursing. This is the crap that people do when they playing games with you. You know, when 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 they are a toxic individual or they are a you know a narcissist, they gonna play games with you. Okay, but that was the last game she'll ever play with me. That's the last. That's the last game she'll play with me. Okay. Keep in mind, I don't have a history of her doing, being flaky like this, so to say. Usually, when she says she's gonna do something or is done, is is it's like she's a person that plans way ahead. Okay. And I should have known some some. She's basically said it because it sounded good. You know. I don't know if she felt some kind of way because I was coming into land living my life. You're not the only person in Atlanta, baby girl. I have other friends and other people I needed to see too. I'm not coming into a state and staying my whole entire vacation with you and your husband. For what? For what? So I decide I'm still going to go to this dinner with her. She pulls up in front of my hotel to pick me up. I get to the car and I notice it's her husband's car. So, when I get to the car, she doesn't come out the car. Keep in mind, we haven't seen each other in two and a half years. When I haven't seen my friends, you know, my other friends that I haven't, that live out of state, we're like, oh my God, girl, what's up? How you doing? She didn't even get out the car, guys. She's in the back. I look in the back, and I'm like, why well, I see three people in the back seat? She got her husband driving. I'm. She wants me to sit in the front seat. She's sitting in the back with her with her um herself and her two nephews and i'm like you haven't seen your home girl in two and a half years and you decide to bring your husband and your two nephews i would have came alone why would you do that so i'm like all right cool and i already know toxic people narcissists they love an entourage okay they love an entourage they love it remember i was telling you about the other friend in um, Houston, the other relative in Houston, um, that my god sister that that did that crap. They always got to have somebody around them, filling in that energy, focusing on them. So I'm looking like, this is this is so stupid. Like you're wasting my time. <laughs> this is dumb. So I get in the car, or whatever. I'm like, hey, how's everybody doing? How you doing? Da -da -da -da, whatever. Being you know fake, whatever. So then we go down the road. I'm like, where y'all going? So we end up going to some like Chinese restaurant. I got on like a nice sweater. I got on my hill boots looking cute. I'm thinking we going to a nice restaurant. Her one of her nephews had on socks with, with, with sandals, like slides, Adidas slides that you wear like at the beach. I'm looking like this is a hot mess. This is crazy. So we go to this little Chinese little restaurant. I mean, we could have went somewhere else. I could have paid for myself, okay? So, we go to this Chinese restaurant. Um, the service was trash. I'm not even going to tell you what restaurant it was. It was trash, but it was in College Park, Georgia. <laughs> so, we eat. And during the dinner, it's awkward, guys. It's awkward. I'm quiet because I'm not going to talk my business in front of your husband and your two nephews who were kids. One is like in junior high. The other one's in college. I don't know these boys. That they don't even know my business. It was just so weird. So I just ate my food. My phone rung. I picked my phone up. I said, "Hey, how you doing?" I didn't care at this point because I felt literally disrespected. Okay, I was just like, she did not have to do this. She could have just canceled the whole dinner completely, and I could have went to New York and just went on my freaking life. Okay. So her husband was actually more excited. He was the one who was like, hey, Angie, how you doing? What's going on? You look great. Da, 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 da. Her husband was the one who was making conversation. I even turned to her and said, are you doing okay? How was your day? How was work? She was like, oh, I'm good. I'm fine. She she kept her mask on to hug me. It was, a, it, guys, it was a hot <laughs> God, I wish, I wish this was vodka, but this is water. Guys, it was a hot mess. Okay, 
And, you know, I and I need people to just be honest. Sometimes you are the honest person. You know, the guy that I've been dating on and off, he said, oh, that was so passive aggressive. Why didn't you say something? I said, you're passive aggressive. Most people, if they were in that situation, at first you're shocked. At first you're shocked. And this is the same thing with narcs. When they do certain things, your automatic response is not going to be like, yo, don't do that. You're not going to do that. You're going to be looking like, they got the audacity? They got the audacity. So don't feel bad if you're a person who doesn't pop off. You know, and, and you know what? You don't always have to pop off. Pop off meaning you don't always have to cause a scene, be dramatic about the disrespect or the um the awkwardness. You don't have to do that. Sometimes it is best to leave these narcs and toxic individuals alone peacefully. Like, you know what? I'm going to let you have this because you know what? You're never going to have access to my energy ever again. And that alone is enough. So a lot of times, I don't say nothing. I let people do what they want, say what they want, act what they want, because you know what? Mother effer, you don't even realize this is the last mother effing time you're going to see my face. So I'll chill, I'll eat, I'll drink with you, I'll parlay. Because guess what? You don't even know. You're going to be here. You're going to be like, the number you have reached has been disconnected. You're never going to have access to me. And you don't always have to leave people, you know, you know, popping off. Okay? Smile. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I see you. I peep you. Okay. Mm-hmm. And just ghost them. Ghost these narcissists. Ghost these toxic individuals. You don't even have to give them any more energy than you've been giving them, okay? Honestly, I don't know. Maybe y'all can help me figure it out. I don't know what her problem is. You know, some people, some of my friends that I told when I got back to New York, some of them say they think she thinks I'm jealous of her. How? I'm li out here living my best life. Why would I be jealous of you because of a man? There's so many men out there. I'm not an ugly woman. There are plenty of men who want me. Um, and then other people are saying that she sees my change, basically. Then there's some people saying she's miserable and you aren't, <laughs> you know, a lot of times I think we also want to say this is that you, you may see people who have more than you. Cause in my head, I'm like, why would she be hating on me? Why would she be acting like this? She's a doctor she um has family she's married she's healthy she owns two houses she owns two cars so why would you have a problem with me a lot of times also people get so comfortable and the narc as well does this people get so comfortable with you being at your lowest point that when they see you shining they can't handle it they can't handle your new light they can't handle your new confidence they can't stand that. They liked it better when you were broken busted. They liked it better when you had no confidence and you didn't love yourself when you was looking crazy. You didn't know what to put on. You didn't know how to match. You wasn't looking fly. They love that because that makes them secure. As long as Angie is broken busted, I feel good. Okay? Oh, wait. She, she, has, a, she has a mind of her own? Nah, I don't like that. I don't like that. Okay? So... A lot of people can't stand to see your glow up, okay? That that might be it. I'm not narcissistic, so that's not the first thought that comes to my mind. Like, oh, everyone's jealous of me. I don't think like that. But people will be jealous of your light. People will be jealous of your peace. You can have a whole bunch of stuff. You can have every degree, every house, every dress, every suit in the closet, and still be freaking miserable. But... People will be miserable with their lot and you're happy with your little. You know what I'm saying? You're happy with less and that's the problem for them. They're trying to figure out how she don't got this and that or how he don't got this and that. But they're happier than me. I don't get it. And then what they'll do is they'll try to, they'll try to knock you off your throne. Okay? They'll try to knock your crown off. They'll try to humble you. Okay, humble you and make you miserable uh, along with them. All right, but let me tell you, 
Uh, I'm going to finish out the whole energy aspect of it. But let me see what y'all saying in the comments. Ooh, I can't even see the comments. Ooh, let's see. What did I miss here? Ooh, okay. I'm seeing a lot of stuff up in here. It's, it's those silent contracts. This is what Diva said. My narc that I am leaving is notorious for that, and he is a Taurus. Ooh, ooh. So is my new boss. Oh, oh my gosh. Um, What happened? Let's see. What's, oh, my God. Let me see. Yes, I am the black sheep in my family. I am the generational curse breaker. Uh, I'm going to call you Fa, okay? <laughs> How much is it for my call, Nicole? Okay, so the call is $15 for 30 minutes and $30 for one hour. Oh my God, I would have walked out. <laughs> Libra rising, Capricorn, Capricorn sun, Scorpio moon. Oh, I got a Scorpio moon too. And you're a Capricorn. That's crazy. My friend that I saw in um, Atlanta, he's a Capricorn. Y'all y'all love money. <laughs> y'all love money. My Capricorns love to work and they love money. Oh my gosh. That's all that man talk about is money. Picking friends up is part of the fun of having friends visit. Exactly, Lottie. They like to keep your head spinning. Uh-huh, with all that craziness. She sounds like a manipulative cray-cray. Yeah, I know. Yeah, and it's crazy how you can go so many years and not realize how, like, people are batshit crazy. I've pressed charges against my ex-narc a year ago, and the case is still ongoing. He's going to jail 100%. Do you think he could be stalking me? Uh, yeah, I think so. <laughs> of course. Please be safe. Carry a weapon, girl, not to scare you, and pray and put your protection candles and prayers up around you, girl. Why is she acting weird? I don't know. Is she jealous? I don't know, guys. She sounds unhappy and jealous. I have no idea. I can't figure it out, honestly. All I know is that I can feel the energy, and she has a problem with me. She has um, something against me. She could have a really nice girls night out with you good f exact if i haven't seen my friend in two and a half years i would have been like looking listen babe look babe me and angie's going out we're gonna go do our girls thing and on the next trip you'll see her why are you dragging your husband and your two freaking nephews out with me why would you do that it guys it it, it was just so awkward and weird <laughs> Narcs always think people are jealous of them. Correct, Fa. That's very true. They like to make you miserable. Sometimes I'm jealous of single people. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah, I, I have people who are jealous of me because I travel. You know, um, I'm actually not a miserable single person. I'm actually so used to being single and so used to not having family that I actually have to learn how it is to be in a relationship and how it is to be around relatives because I'm so used to being alone and doing things for myself. Uh, Knox love to see you doing worse than um. Point on. I just went through this. I was happy with less because I know what's in my bank account. They're deeply insecure and have to wear their money. They have something to prove and get mad when you don't. You know what? That might be it too. Why does it seem like all Scorpio moons are generational curse breakers? I don't know. I think because Scorpio represents destruction. So we come in with that powerful force like, yo, it's over. We got to slay these demons in our family. So it kind of makes sense. And I really enjoy having Scorpio moon energy. Um, Yes, yeah, Scorpio moons, most of them are emp empathic, definitely. Uh, yes. Oh, you're a cappy too, D a diva. We cappies love uh, stability and money <laughs> brings that. It's very, very true. Yeah, yeah. I like I like Capricorn men. I, I, I don't... Capricorn women, I've had issues with. I'm not saying I would have an issue with you, Diva. But I don't have good history with Capricorn women. For some reason, they end up uh, kind of like 
competing with me in a sense. Yeah, I don't know why they do that. But yeah, but I, I don't, you know, I don't, hopefully you're not that way with your female friends. But I find that a lot of Capricorn women will um, end up competing with me. Like, why are you competing with me? I, I'm not in competition with nobody but myself. But yeah, so um, after the dinner, guys, I'm going to finish off this story. After the dinner, I go, I, they drop me off to my hotel. And immediately, guys, this is what I'm talking about, the whole energy thing. Immediately. <laughs> I get in, um, I get into my hotel and I start sneezing guys. All right. <laughs> I start, I start sneezing guys. I start coughing. My left ear is ringing and it's sore. And I was like, what? <laughs> I'm like, what is this? My throat was sore. My ear is ringing. My nose is, I'm going, I'm doing all of this. I felt so sick. I had a headache. Then I started thinking back, what did I eat? I had only shrimp and broccoli. So, and I had a sweet tea. I didn't drink any alcohol. I said, what the heck is this? I felt chills in my body. I felt so sick, guys. When I tell you I felt so sick, I said, oh, Lord, I got the Rona. I'm telling you. I said, oh, my gosh. I came to Atlanta and got the big Rona. I said, oh, my goodness. I'm sick. I can't believe this. I, w I mean, I went to the bathroom. I tried to use the toilet. That didn't happen. I I'm not a person who you know vomits so that didn't that didn't come up i said what is going on so i always carry cold medicine so i said okay maybe i am like catching a cold or maybe i have you know rona so i said um well let me take this cold pills uh he's still around we're on and off but he's still around he's a virgo the virgo he's still around but you know we're I, I don't know where this relationship is going, honestly. I don't want to talk about it, but he he he's still around. So um anyway, so um what part was I up to? Yes, yeah, so I'm like I, I, I feel like oh my gosh, I'm really sick. What is going on? I'm thinking like, yeah, I, I'm I got Rona. This is it. I, I went a whole year without getting sick. What is going on? So it took me a while for it to click to connect <laughs> so I go into my wallet because I always carry like cold medicine in my wallet or my makeup bag I would make this is my makeup bag right here actually and I always carry like cold medicine in it and so I went in there and I popped these pills I'm drinking water they have tea and a tea um, maker I guess that's what it's called a coffee maker but a tea maker inside the room so I make some tea I drank my tea and I said okay you know what maybe if I go to sleep I'll wake up and feel better so I go and I take a nap I wake up maybe about one o'clock in the morning and I still feel sick guys I'm like oh my gosh I got the Rona what's going on so I said you know what they have a store downstairs um in the hotel let me see if they have any medicine any aspirin like if i have a fever then i can take an aspirin and kind of break that fever or whatever's going on with me so i get down there at the store and i find that the store has alka seltzer so i'm like all the symptoms of the alka seltzer so i could just drink this and i should feel you know better or whatever so i go down there i get some cough drops i get some alka seltzer and I, I had like some um, vegetarian little breakfast patties or something. I warmed that up. I said, well, maybe I need to eat again. Warm that up. Go back to my hotel room. So I eat. I drink some more tea. I take the Alka-Seltzer. And I stay up for a little while. And then I go to sleep. When I wake up in the morning, guys, it was as if. No symptom was ever there. My ear wasn't hurting. My throat felt fine. I, I was just, I was completely myself. I said, what the hell was that? <sighs> Guys, so let me tell you what that was. And a lot of, we, we, this is why the video is called Believe in the Energy. That is when... Your body is literally reacting to negative individuals or negativity. Um, 
her energy was so powerful, so negative. You know, people can think things about you and you literally will feel what they're feeling for you. So I put one and two together and I said, oh, all of that, all that energy, I absorbed it. All that, all those thoughts and negative feelings she has towards me, I literally felt it in my body. Okay? So don't play around these negative individuals. Okay? There's no way. And guys, the, the next day and the next day, I was fine. No sickness. I didn't come home sick. I'm good now. I've been home now. I think uh, for nine days I've been home. Even though they make, they're making me quarantine, basically, for 10 days. I think to, either today or tomorrow is my last day. Um, I'm fine. No headaches, no earache, no sore throat, no nothing. I didn't even take any medicine when I got home. I popped some sea moss and I just called it a day. Um, but it was all that negative energy that I had picked up from that individual. A few days later... Actually, you know, when I when I got home, I think I texted her and said, back in New York. That's all I said. Oh, I like that one, Nephi. Narc flu. Yes, I had the narc flu. I like that, Nephi. I like that. I had the narc flu. So now I can't play, I can't play like that. When you heal, your body and your spirit is going to be more sensitive towards negative energy. Okay, this that's crazy. I'm sure that little alka seltzer did not knock out no Rona. <laughs> okay, that was that was more of a spiritual thing that I went through that manifests into a physical feeling. Okay, that's the reason why I'm, I'm sorry I'm playing my hair so much. I know I'm annoying, but yeah, um, that was crazy. That scared the crap out of me, and that was also. You know, that was also God, my ancestors, confirming, like, you're not tripping. You know what you felt. You felt it correctly. It is what it is, and that's it. A couple of days later, I get a text from her, because we had ended up buying, like, some beignets. I don't know if you guys know what beignets are, but it's just, like, basically powdered donuts, okay? They're usually from, they're created in New Orleans, but they happen to have them in Atlanta. And she was like, oh, hey, um, how are the beignets? I said, good. That was it. That's it. That was the last thing that she said to me. Um, you know, and as I told you, these individuals will text you, will call you, will say things to you to test you to see where you are emotionally with them. When they feel you drifting from them, when they feel you change, they'll throw little tests out there to see where you are emotionally with them. Okay. So I um I'm fine. I'm okay. And I feel I've already detached from her. I had enough time to detach. Uh, enough time to detach from that individual. So it's so mysterious how the energy can get into your system. It's like that. As you say, a manifestation of energy. Yes, we need to be so strong. Yep. So whenever you're around someone and all of a sudden you're getting headaches, guys, your stomach ache, you know, you're getting a stomach ache, you get the Rona, you get the narc flu around these people, that's, that's, that's your spirit letting you know. Uh, abort mission, it's time to get up out of here, okay? So um, I'm just glad that I'm, I, I'm paying attention to it and I'm very, very sure that in the past, the signs were always there, whether it was, you know, complete red flags in my face or my body responding to the negative energy. So please do not play, you know, with that energy. Uh, your body is going to let you know, get the hell away from these people, okay? But yeah, um, that's my story, guys. I hope you can take this information and um, let it be uh a reminder that your body's gonna let you know what's up and no you're not tripping um we are gonna get signs um 
you know, to guide us and to protect us pretty much. All right. Thank you for tuning in. If you want to make a donation to me, you can do so. My cash app is the dollar sign, the light seven, seven, seven. Um, I have Zelle. I have PayPal. I have, what else do I got? I think that's it. Uh, Neo Angie 3000 at yahoo.com. When I get out of here, I would put the information in the comment section in the description bar. Um, and I'll try to come back on, I don't want to promise y'all cause y'all know me. I, I tend to disappear, but I'm going to try to do better guys. I am. And uh, is there, if there's a topic that you want me to cover, write it down in the comment section when I close out this live and I will try to do a live on it or just, you know, a regular video and post it for you guys. Love you guys. I hope everybody has an amazing weekend. Um, let's see. Let's see. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. And if you do send a donation, please email me or put your email address in the memo. Don't just send money because how can I contact you? Okay, so it's $15 for 30 minutes and $30 for one hour for phone conversations. I don't do video chat. I only talk on the phone because I don't need no anxiety, okay? Um, so... Yes, if you make a donation, I want to thank you. But make sure you put donation. And if you're booking a phone conversation, put phone session. All right, in the description and leave your email if you can. So I can contact you and we can set up a time so that we can talk. But um, share, like, subscribe. Please like this video because I need to be on the algorithm. And I appreciate you. Have an amazing weekend, guys. Love you. Peace and blessings.